Okay, so I'm going to get started on my presentation by Angelica Hrobeck of the Wardenburg Syndrome. What is the Wardenburg Syndrome? It is, um, well, let's start off by saying that it was named by, um, after a Dutch ophthalmologist and geneticist named Petrus Johannes Wardenburg, and he discovered it in 1951, so it is a fairly newer uh, syndrome to us. Um, the syndrome is caused by mutations in any of the several genes that affect the division and migration of the neural crest cells or neural tube during embryonic development. Um, so neural crest cells are the stem cells that are left over after the neural tube closes on and then they go on to form non-central nervous system cells in, that are in different parts of the body which include like the bones, cartilage, melanocytes, um, so like the cartilage of the face, ear, and then the peripheral nerves of the intestines. Um, Wardenburg syndrome is a genetic condition, a rare genetic condition that can cause hearing loss and changes in coloring, so like pigmentation of the hair, skin, and even of the eyes. Um, it has multiple different types with different variations, and then different symptoms go along with each different type. Um, the two, there are two features that are consistent uh, across the entire Wardenburg syndrome um, to some degree, and that's like some degree of congenital hearing loss and some degree of pigmentation deficiencies, which is mostly within the eyes. Um, although most people that have Wardenburg syndrome have normal hearing, there's sometimes cases where hearing loss can occur in one or both of the ears. Um, and when the hearing loss is present, it is congenital, so it is there from birth. Um, people that have the condition have the pigmentation in one eye, and it often makes it very pale blue or very bright blue, or there's even cases where both eyes are different colors, so there's a blue eye and a brown eye, and there's also been cases of one eye being partially blue or par and partially brown. So that's something else too. Um, it's associated with the underdevelopment of the tissue fibers that are in the eye that like make up the iris. So that's why the color region of the eye then has the uh, impact on you know what color it ends up being. Um, they also have distinctive hair coloring. So it's like a patch of white hair that or hair that uh, in general turns prematurely gray. And then the skin can even be patchy or discolored in some areas. Okay, the next slide. Um, so the feature uh, features of Wardenburg syndrome vary uh, among all the individuals that are affected, even when it's in the same family. So um, if the mom has you know these types of symptoms, the child can have these types of symptoms. It doesn't matter you know that they're not going to have the exact same thing. Um, it is estimated that the prevalence of Wardenburg syndrome is 1 in 42,000, so it's actually pretty low. And then um, it accounts for 2 to 5% of all the cases of congenital hearing loss. All right, for the diagnosis, there's actually no diagnosis that can be done. There's not a test that you can go and take and they're going to tell you that you have this. But when you go into the doctor, they check to see if you have two of the major criteria that would be the difference in the eye colors that I mentioned before, you know, a discoloration of the piece of hair or abnormality in one or both of the eyes. And then also, obviously, if you have a parent or a sibling with a syndrome, it's also a pretty, pretty big um, showing that you may have it as well. All right. For our next slide, inheritance. Um, so Wardenburg syndrome is typically inherited in autom autosomal dominant pattern. So that means usually when one copy of the altered gene is in each is sufficient to cause the disorder. In most cases, when an affected person has one parent with the condition, um, a small percentage of the cases result from new mutations in the genes. So that in that situation, these cases occur with people who have no history of the disorder at all that, you know, present in their family. Um, some cases of the Wardenburg syndrome, like type uh, 2 and type uh, Four, they have an autosomal recessive pattern of inheritance, and that means that both copies of the genes, both copies of the gene in each cell have the mutations. Um, usually, the parents of an individual with an autosomal recessive gene each carry one copy of the mutated genes, but they don't show the symptoms or the signs of the condition. All right, for our next slide what can cause Wardenburg syndrome. So the causes basically are there that, that there's a mutations in the genes either in EDN3, EDNRB, MITF, PAX3, SNAI2, or SOX10 genes. 
Um, they are all involved with the formation and the developments of the several types of cells. So especially those pigment producing cells like the melanocytes, those are the ones that um, obviously make you have the changes in the um, hair, the eyes, and the skin. Um, and then in a lot of cases, the genetic cause of Wardenburg syndrome has not been identified. So doctors have not been able to figure it out. And then on to our next slide. So for the next slide here is um, a little showing of someone, uh, how someone can look who has the syndrome. So in the top right corner, the very light colored eyes, also like sort of like a unibrow. The eyes look like they're a little bit further apart from each other than typical. Um, so in the bottom right corner, we have a female and it looks like her eyes are also further apart from each other. And then you see that white streak of hair. Um, I know that some people do this because it's fancy, but I don't think that that's the case for her. Um, and then in the left uh, picture, that is actually Paris Jackson, and they haven't um, confirmed it, but they think that because her eyes are like this insane light shade of like pale blue, that she has the syndrome also, but it hasn't been confirmed. But that's what they're saying, that that's the most likely cause. And then for our next slide... So there's actually four different types of Wardenburg syndrome. So that's fun. Um, there are four recognized types of it. Um, they're all distinguished by their phys physical characteristics and sometimes by their genetic cause. And it is believed that they are autosomal dominant. Um, types one and types two are the most common forms of the syn uh, syndrome. And they basically have uh, approximately half, of the, half to a third of the cases, while types three and four are very rare. Um, like type 4 comprises of like a fifth of the cases and type 3 comprises of less than 2% of the known cases. And then here is a little bit of background on the cases. All right, type 1. Type 1 is caused by a mutation in the PAX3 gene that I mentioned before. Um, it's characterized by congenital hearing loss, also the graying of the hair, the discoloration of the eyes, and then the wider gap between the inner corners of the eyes. Um, and it is also typical for type 1 to have a high nasal bridge or a flat nose tip and then smaller edges of the nostrils and a unibrow, like in the picture that I showed before of the uh, young boy in the top right corner, which I'm showing that now. All right, back to this. Okay, for type 2, the difference that, de that defines type 2 from type 1 is that patients don't have the wider gap between the inner corner of the eyes. Um, and in type 2, hearing loss tends to be more common and much more severe. Um, it's by far the most common gene to have with this type is when muta mutated is the MITF gene. Um, and if two individuals with the mutation for the genes have a child carrying both, muta carrying both mutations, which is homozygous, there's a 25% chance. There's also a additional symptoms present in the child, like um, there is a hole in the iris, they could have smaller eyes, hardened bones, albinism sometimes, and then complete deafness is also one too. Um, they also can have like a developmental delay, um, you know, early child in their early childhood. Um, and then a strange thing that I saw was also increased muscle tone. Um, there's also autistic like behavior and then under development of like ear like structures or in inner ear structures. Um, and I saw that they also have a lack of smell because they are missing an olfactory bulb in the brain. All right, and then for type 3, they call this also Klein-Wardenburg syndrome or Wardenburg-Klein syndrome. Um, it basically has the same symptoms as type 1, but a more severe presentation of type 1. Um, so it has additional symptoms like that affect the arms and the hands. So they could have joint problems of the fingers. They have like underdeveloped muscles in this case. And they had fused digits, permanent figure, uh, finger contractures, and then developmental delays as mentioned before. Um, for type four, it is called Shaw-Wardenburg syndrome or Wardenburg-Shaw syndrome. Type four can be caused by mutation in the SOX10, like just in type two. Um, it is also for type four, they have an addition of Hersfringer disease, which is a congenital lack of nerves in the intestines, and that leads to bowel dysfunction. They also, uh, the hearing loss in this type isn't as common, but they also have, in very, very rare cases of this already rare syndrome, they have a cleft lip. All right, so for our final slide, 
can Wardenburg syndrome be treated? There's no cure for it, and then, but most of these cases don't even require treatment. In the cases of hearing loss, um, a hearing aid or a co cochlear implant can help. Um, discoloration of hair, um, you can keep it the way it is, or hair dye, I guess, can be used to cover up the spots. And then for the hypopigmentation of the skin, there's deep pigment, deep pigmentation treatments that can be used, and those are used to bleach the all over of the skin in order to make the patches less visible and basically make your skin whiter in a sense. And then these are my references. Thank you.